So just just uh, maybe a quick word of welcome to all of you from the organizing team to, to this ICT for D workshop. Um, I'm not going to say too much. The, this workshop is the latest in a series of workshops discussing uh, strategies, trends, and some kind of planning and community building um, for the ICT for D community in South Africa. Uh, and today what we explicitly hope to accomplish is firstly have some input from some of our invited speakers who we think might help give us a bit of context and then essentially spend most of the workshop uh, discussing some of the key challenges that we have in defining and developing this ICT for the community. Right? So this is a workshop in the true sense of the word. We are actually going to have lots of talks if you've seen the program. Uh, a lot of this is actually um, discussion and, and feedback and, and hopefully maybe coming to some kind of uh, resolution at the end of the workshop for the way forward. Um, so you should all have got a program. I think the program is um, just a bit more information um, than what was in the ISAC pro program this morning. So it's, it's still the same uh, event. And you've got one of these uh, ICT4D uh, wristbands where you know you, you try to start a trend by and just doing it and hope that it catches on. Uh, hash ICT 4DZA is what's on this. If you can't read it clearly, um, it's supposed to be the hashtag for the event. So anybody who wants to tweet, uh, this is where what you should be attaching to the end of your tweets. So at this point, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Monkey, who will chair this session with the speakers. I will warn you that um, what. Our first speaker is here, the second speaker is not yet here, so there is a possibility that she's rushing over here. And if she doesn't get here in time, we'll do a slight shuffling of the schedule and have a speak at the end rather than immediately afterwards, but I'll handle the market spot. Afternoon everyone. Today I have the honor of presenting the ICT for D workshop for the speakers. So contrary to what you have in front of you, we're going to start with Jonathan. And his talk will be titled, Remarks from After Access, Inclusion, Development, and a More Mobile Internet. Let me tell you a little bit about Jonathan. Jonathan Donner is a Senior Director of Research at Caribou Digital. Over the last decade, Jonathan has published extensively on the remarkable growth in mobile telephony in the developing world focusing on its implications for socioeconomic development and inclusion in the information society. His projects have covered topics such as micro-enterprise development, mobile banking, citizen journalism, mobile health, youth, and new media. Prior to joining Caribbean Digital, Jonathan was a researcher in technology for Emerging Markets Group at Microsoft Research, a postdoctoral research fellow at the Earth Institute of Columbia University, and a consultant with Monitor Company and the OTF Group in Boston. He's the author, along with Richard Ling, of Mobile Communication and co-editor with Patricia Mikhail of M Health and Practice, Mobile Technology for Health Promotion in the Developing World. His research has also appeared in Journal of, Communi of Computer Mediated Communication, the Information Society, Information Technologies and International Development, the Journal of International Development and Innovations. He also holds a PhD from Stanford University in Communication Research. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to Jonathan. Questions will be taken after Jonathan's talk. Sure. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks uh, so much for the workshop and all the attendees and uh, everybody for um, welcoming me today. Do I need this? I don't even know if this is on. If you guys can hear me in the back, if I speak like this, is this okay? Okay, I'll keep this tone. If, if interrupt me if for some reason I fade, and I'll, I'll amp it back up. Um, this is the way I want to start this talk, is by first apologizing for something that happens almost all the time, and then apologize again for something which almost never happens. So the thing that happens all the time is technological glitches, and I'm not presenting on my machine, and there's a chance that some of the slides will have fonts that weren't quite where they should have been, and all that. And I apologize, but that's normal. It wouldn't be a conference if that didn't happen. The thing that's not normal is um, uh, having Mark Zuckerberg steal some of your thunder on um, the day before a talk. Right? I don't know. Did anybody see what he was? He got to go to the UN, um, I guess, yesterday, and announced the Connect the World initiative, which is another iteration of uh, re-articulation re and a, a sort of expression of enthusiasm 
for how important it is to get the world connected, uh, whatever that means. Right? And he said everybody needs to get on the internet, whatever that means. And that's because it's good for everybody to be on the internet, and whatever that means. And so that's, it's a tough act to follow. I've, luckily, there's lots of gaps and maybe some spaces for me to opine a bit on that. And so the other thing I want to say, just uh, as, a, as a primer, this is a lesson to any of the mild suggestion anybody who's thinking about writing a book, is hurry up, right? No matter when you think you've got another couple months before it's time to get the thing done, just don't. Just get it out there. Because this thing already, this book, which I, I had to they had pry it from my hands four or five months ago, um, is already out of date in some ways. And it's not even out until next month, right? And it happens with all our work, I know, but in uh, this sort of area of mobile communication and development, it's, it's, it's happening particularly quickly, which is why things like those up to talk can, can throw me for a So with that kind of context, I also would love to show you cover art. I don't have it yet. But these are remarks uh, kind of somewhat tailored for you guys uh, about um, the, the book that's under preparation called the um, After Access. Uh, and the key term here, I think, is a more mobile internet. And we'll see, uh, come back to that in a little while. So I am going to, uh, Stuckerberg takes from me, maybe I'll take a little bit from him. This is actually their data. Uh, this is a internet.org white paper, uh, which I actually like because I've always been looking for this particular slide. This is a global level footprint coverage of uh, where, there's a, where there's a cell signal. And it's also where all the people are. And if you looked at one of those earth from night things, it would be almost the same, right? And so there's a glass half full and a glass half empty way to think about this or more precisely, a glass 85% full kind of way of thinking about this, which is 85% of the world's population supposedly lives under a cell signal, at least 2G. And right now, about 50% of the world lives under 3G, and that's moving quickly. So that, that, that does set up a kind of glass half full, glass half empty dynamic. But it is certainly the case that in terms of basic telephone connectivity, if, if I had gone back 20 years ago and showed somebody uh, this slide, they, would have, they, they wouldn't have believed that this was possible. Right? And it's been this historical blink of an eye, and the world has gotten cell signals. Um, and that's been a kind of victory, I think, uh, for the 85% who live near a signal. Uh, and some of the questions now are whether we're, gonna, we're in the process of repeating that when it comes to internet connectivity or not. Uh, and obviously, we'd be using the same infrastructure, we're relying on mobile phones again uh, to, to do that for, for, comic, for uh, internet connectivity. So there's a lot of enthusiasm about what this might mean for development. Jeff Sachs calls a cell phone the single most transformative technology for development. Um, the World Bank agrees that mobile communication has had a bigger impact on humankind in a shorter period of time than any other invention in human history. It's also big proclamations. And then IBM research, just a video, I don't know who cleared this, 2011. In our global society, the wealth of economies are decided by the level of access to information. And in five years, the gap between information haves and have nots will cease to exist due to the advent of uh, old technology. So good news, we only have one more year to <laughs> wait and everything will be fine. Right? <laughs> so that, again, that, but that's the, that's the hype level, right? And then the Zuckerberg thing, the like talk at the UN was another kind of example of that. But all this enthusiasm, coupled with, some, with a lot of good intentions, has created a field, right? A whole community of practice, uh, you know, has heritage in ICT for D, which is why we're all here. Uh, there's a whole sub-community that thinks that the flag that they're flying is mobiles for development. And if you do a Google search on images and you lump them all together, this is the kind of thing you, you see. You get a lot of people talking about uh, why mobiles are going to uh, solve or, or be so empowering in the, in the development challenge. And I don't disagree, I just want to drill down a little bit on that. So, oh good, here's my first font error. Um, but this is the sort of thing that the book is engaging with, so just to set the tone for the book, and I really apologize for the, the bad, um, it looks quite different on the screen here. But internet, society, literature, uh, mobile communication, studies, Papers, literature, community, that's another interdisciplinary group that I, I spend a lot of time hanging around with, and ICTD, which is kind of folks in the room here. Um, and as you know, that's a very interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary conversation. No one discipline and no one interdisciplinary conversation has a, a real claim on this whole picture. Right? So 
the work, the book itself, and hopefully, you know, where you guys are all coming from, has a bit of that kind of multidisciplinary flavor to it. Um, I will say one last thing on this is some of these names are, are people working here in South Africa. I've, I've been very lucky to work with Marion Walton and some of her students and with Gary Marston uh, before we lost him. Uh, which has been, they, those two in particular, uh, and Kate Pierce in the States, are people who have just really influenced a lot of the ideas in this book. Um, After Access is a title, something that Chicot and Gary and I wrote as a paper uh, a few years ago for Kai, and it's become the sort of seed for the book. So I, I, owe, I owe all of them a lot. Um, so with the talk today, the, the sort of, what I want to do is, is spend a little time uh, figuring out what, what we should mean when we talk about mobile internet, when we use that phrase, and whether we should use that phrase at all. Um, and once I do that, then it's easier to talk about the new opportunities that, mo that a more mobile internet creates for ICTD, and also raise some uh, concerns with some of the barriers or constraints that the shift to a more mobile internet also creates. Um, and then I'll kind of wrap that up with some implications. I'm gonna test on volume again, are we okay in like that? And does that seem like an okay thing to do with the half hour I've got? Um, so let's do mobile internet first. Um, it's a, even on Google Scholar, which isn't you know the zeitgeist of the world or something, but it's a great place to see what scholars are writing about. If you click in, put in quotes, mobile internet, you'll get um, thousands of papers <coughs> with mobile internet in the title. It's kind of an accepted term, um, but some of these visuals are so bad that you can get kind of a hunch that it's hard to pin it down what, what it means. So right? it's a hard thing to reflect on, on an image. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. But um, mobile internet, you know, well, are we talking about the apps? Are we talking about peering into a page to see uh, uh, you know, a, a Google page? is usually a device that somebody's cradling. You know, there, there's, um, this, this looks like maybe some, some stuff you guys like a little bit more computer science and things. Uh, there's different ways to talk about mobile internet. Um, there are actually many ways to talk about mobile internet. One is just to try to kind of characterize a shift from a fixed internet, whatever that was, to a more mobile internet. This just tracks operating systems um, and uh, little, little cookies or, or trackers that have been placed on about three million websites uh, around the world. And then they can figure out what percentage of those visits are coming from fixed uh, uh, desktops versus, or desktop operating systems and, uh, and mobiles, and obviously Mobiles in the world are kind of gaining on that fixed share, and in places like South Africa and India, uh, places that were sort of um, a little bit more resource constrained <coughs> to begin with, they've actually crossed, right? So there are more visits to websites uh, from mobile devices and mobile operating systems than, than from fixed. Um, there are other ways you can think about, let me go back to that for a second. There are other ways you could do this. You could try to count users, uh, which is hard to do. You could try to count subscriptions which is a little bit easier to do, that's what the ITU does. You can try to track device sales, you know, you can try to talk about revenue from companies, you can try to figure out where companies res uh, invest in their resources, whether they're building for fixed internet first or mobile internet first, and on all those dimensions, the shift is on the way to a more mobile internet where, you know, I don't think anybody's gonna disagree with that. The exact measurements are harder to do. The other reason it's so hard to do is I think it's really hard to figure out what we mean by mobile internet where the mobile internet experience ends. This is a slide I show sometimes. I, uh, oops, sorry about the font here. But this side of the, of the table, we kind of would all agree looks like a mobile internet experience, right? If you're, if you're on a smartphone and you're, you've got your data plan loaded up and you've got a connection and you're, you know, you're using a browser, you're using an app and, and you're, you're exchanging IP bits back and forth, um, you're, you're using the mobile internet. Um, but then South Africa is a great place to see all of these other types of mobile internets that often don't get counted in those figures. You know, all the 2G, you know, feature phones and things, uh, good old mix it, you know. Uh, people would say, you know, I'd go to interviews and say, well, you know, are you, are you, are you on the internet? No. Do you use mix it? Yes. You know, and there are, there are possibly hundreds of millions of people who fall in this bucket that they're, their, their 2G or their feature phone is actually touching the internet in some way or another, but they don't get counted as true internet users because they're not on a smartphone. Um, even more, and this is the one that's really edgy, I think, is IVR, it's interactive voice response. Um, 
not all voice response systems do this, but you can set up an IVR that is an internet gateway and interacts with data that essentially resides on the edge of the internet, right? Such that you can use